Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm Shane Perrier. I'm Head of Fundraising and Strategy at ICUSASA Student Financial Aid Program, uh, which stands for ISFAP. Uh, we are a non-profit entity which was formed way back in 2016, end of 2016, beginning 2017, uh, as an outcome of the ministerial task team objective that was set uh, to find a solution for the missing middle uh, category of students uh, and funding for the missing middle category of students in South Africa. As you would understand, funding uh, education is a massive challenge in the country and it's not just government's prerogative to solve that problem and that's where private sector uh, engaged with the public sector uh, to understand how they could come and address this problem uh, and this challenge together. Uh, ISFAP got formulated under the Tutuka Education Upliftment Fund, uh, which is part of the SICA, uh, which is South African Institute of Chartered Accountants, in, uh, at the end of 2016, beginning 2017, uh, quite soon after when the hashtag Fees Must Fall campaign hit South African shows. Uh, ISFAP was uh, mandated to support uh, the missing middle students, funding of missing middle students, uh, which was predominantly within household incomes between 350,000 to 600,000 uh, rands a year, joint house household income. Uh, thereafter, the focus was also uh, on funding critical skills, uh, because those are the skills that the private sector and the public sector need the most. And those are also the skills that will get uh, employment uh, in the first wave, uh, or, so, or as soon as you know, employment opportunities open up. You would also understand that uh, the country is facing uh, a lot of challenges uh, from a public sector funds point of view to fund education. And if you've heard, you know, uh, uh, our finance minister, uh, Mr. Tito Mweni, to uh, speak about the budget, uh, there has been reductions in, uh, in the education uh, funding uh, for the poor category of students in the country. So it remains a challenge. Um, to give you a brief outlook, the country needs about 26 billion rands a year to fund the missing middle category of students and needs about 40 billion rands a year to fund the poor category of students. So the poor category of students uh, belong to a household income between zero to 350,000 uh, and the missing middle is from 350,000 to 600,000. Uh, and of course, the, the poor students are catered for by NISFAS and uh, it's, it's basically funded uh, through National Treasury. Uh, so ISFAP really looks at the other segment, uh, the missing middle segment of students, uh, and that's predominantly our mandate within the critical skills um, areas. Um, ISFAP also focuses on not just funding education, but also providing the wraparound support that these students need to be successful at campus, uh, at university, and further to get jobs in, in, in the employment stage. And it's very critical that we not just measure throughput rates in terms of pass-through percentages of these students graduating, but also making sure they get meaningful employment uh, thereafter so that they contribute to the economy of this country and, and are paying taxes uh, and actually are, 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 are part of this economy in a more conclusive manner. ISFAP uh, has key uh, value proposition uh, areas that, that it focuses on, one being professions development, so focusing on, on developing key professions in the country, which relates to the critical skills. Uh, so it funds all these critical skills with the department, which the Department of Higher Education publishes every year, uh, which include you know, medical professionals, engineers, doctors, nurses, philanthropists, pharmacists, actuarials, accountants, um, uh, and a lot of uh, skills in the financial sector as well. Uh, the second key value proposition item is providing full cost of study. So ISFAP provides a full cost of study because we believe if a student doesn't get uh, all the costs funded by the bursary program, the chance of him not succeeding is fairly high. So ISFAP funds not just tuition fees uh, at, for the university, but it also funds accommodation uh, which is either private accommodation or res accommodation at campus. It funds uh, meals, it funds transport, it funds stipend, uh, books, laptop, and any other allowances that the student may need. Uh, predominantly in, in, during the pandemic, we supported students with additional data allowances and additional special allowances to make sure uh, they cope uh, under the lockdown environment and cope with, with, a, with a more blended distant learning based uh, study model that, that we have in this country now. Uh, the third value proposition is the wraparound support. 
Uh, and that's very critical in success of our students. And that's what we call the secret sauce, uh, because that has seen massive amounts of throughput increases uh, between what we offer uh, and what a similar uh, you know, bursary provider would offer elsewhere. And the wraparound support really talks to providing mentorship, guidance, uh, extra tutorial classes, academic support, uh, behavioral coaching, mentorship, attitudinal coaching, work readiness, you know, financial literacy, things like that. And that really supports students that come from a uh, from a fairly back disadvantaged background from townships and rural areas to really benefit and be on par with the students coming from a city. And that's critically important because that sets the foundation uh, for the students when they start their first year. And, and you would know that the maximum dropouts that we see in this country are predominantly in the first year. So, and that's really the bridge that we provide these students to make sure that uh, when they come and join their first year classes, they're on par or at least, uh, you know, cope pretty well uh, together with the other students coming from private education uh, schools. The fourth uh, value proposition item is technology focus. And I think that, um, that goes to say that we can't expand and, and, and grow ISFAP to serve the full missing middle 28 million, billion rand uh, market uh, if we can't use technology. So using technology, using a platform uh, to monitor, measure, the performance of our students, integrate with the systems at the, at the universities, uh, and really rolling out an online uh, application system platform that actually works across the national landscape is very important for us. And, and if we can only expand and, and grow if we use technology to, to, to scale our, our, our funding. Uh, our fifth and final uh, value proposition item is capacity building, which is to ensure that university campuses uh, are, have the capacity to support our students, have the capacity to bring out new courses, whether it's relevant to fourth industrial revolution or you know, uh, the future skills of what the country needs uh, across each of these professionals, uh, professions that I spoke about. And it's important that we support the universities in, in, that, in that process, whether it is bringing out new courses, whether it's brainstorming with them as to the process of how you know, education is delivered, now more so in a hybrid uh, education model, uh, or whether what funding support they need and what support they, the students might need. And that, it's a pretty evolving, uh, continuous process. And working with the vice chancellors of, across these universities, which are also at a different level. So like a university, a progressive university like a Stellenbosch or a Wits or a, or a UCT uh, is very different in its operations compared to a University of Venda or University of Limpopo. And, and working with these uh, previously disadvantaged universities to bring them on scale and, and capacity at them uh, so that they can deliver the value uh, that, they, that they have to deliver to the students is critically important. So those are the five key value proposition elements that ISFAP focuses on. Uh, our, source, our funding sources is predominantly from both private sector and public sector. Uh, two thirds of our funding comes from the pli pub, uh, private sector, sorry, and, and one third of our funding comes from the public sector. Uh, obviously, we also explore international funding opportunities to fund students, um, and, and that's, a, that's, that's a growing significant portion as well. Uh, we work very closely with uh, Department of Higher Education and Training, uh, with National Treasury, to really make sure that we work closely with government, and our endeavor in the future is to, is to work towards a public-private partnership where we can help government, uh, you know, and the government can help us to implement uh, some of the good practices that, we, that we've been following in the bursary space. How do we identify and, 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 and select our students? Uh, it's a fairly rigorous process. So students, uh, applications for students uh, open up in, in August every year. Uh, July, August, and they have until end of October, November to apply uh, with their grade 11 marks. Uh, we then do a very serious and rigorous uh, means testing process to, that is to make sure uh, that students fall within the household incomes that they state they fall in. So we've got a partnership with the banks, uh, the largest banks in South Africa that actually <clears throat> identify and tell us, uh, you know, what household income does a student come from? Uh, and the applicant comes from. So we then are able to identify whether that student is uh, within the 350 to 600,000 household income bracket, and that's very critical. 
Uh, once that is done, we obviously uh, receive the metric marks uh, early Jan, uh, when that's published by Department of Higher Education and Training, which we have a direct relationship with. Uh, and then we have our own filtration process of choosing uh, some of the best students that apply for uh, various degrees uh, within the critical skills space across uh, the, the universities in South Africa. Uh, ISFAP currently partners with 11 universities in the country, uh, and slowly the plan is obviously to scale that up to all the 26 universities in the country uh, in the coming few years as we increase funding opportunities. One of our key achievements over the last three years, four years that we've been in operation from 2016 to 2017 is our throughput rates, and which has been a hallmark in terms of our performance. It has been a testament to, to uh, you know, our support that we provide our students and to also the full cost of study that we give our students as well. And, and that's uh, in excess of 90 plus percent. So our throughput rate from year one to year two is at 90 plus percent uh, uh, in, the, in the industry, which is fairly on the high level compared to most other bursary providers that, that, are, that are out there in the market. Uh, we also uh, fund uh, sectors across, uh, this, across the South African landscape. So we fund students that come from various industrial backgrounds. We, fund, uh, we get a lot of funding from the banking sector, manufacturing, retail, mining, uh, media, uh, a lot of the CETAs from the government. Uh, we funded by uh, the Labor Commission, uh, by the IDC, uh, so some of the large banks and insurance and asset management companies in the country. And we're really appreciative of uh, this effort because it is, a, it is really a joint effort between private sector and public sector uh, to support the missing middle uh, funding of this country. Uh, in terms of COVID and the challenges that it brings across has been a lot towards you know, supporting students who have struggled uh, going back to home to study and being able to adjust to this blended, blended studying model. And that's been uh, uh, one of the biggest challenges and learnings for ISFAP as well, because we have had to tailor our solutions, you know, bring a lot of online uh, things happen, a lot of support being given online, uh, additional data allowances, additional special allowances, and really keeping a tab on our students because they're, they're studying from home. And I think that's been one of the key uh, opportunities for us to improve on, uh, but it's also been a learning where we've actually done uh, fairly better being a small and nimble team at ISFAP. So ISFAP uh, is, is uh, structured as a non-profit Section 18A company uh, and uh, with a PBO status. Uh, we have uh, founding members which are industry leaders. So we've got uh, SICA, which is South African Institute of Chartered Accountants, as one of our founding members. We've got the First Rand Foundation. We've got the Banking Association South Africa. Uh, we've got ASISA, which is Association for Savings and Investments uh, South Africa. And we've also got uh, BLSA, which is the uh, Business Leadership South Africa, as our founding members. So we've got five founding members, and they're very critical and, and large role players in the industry, both in the public and private space, uh, that encourage uh, education, which basically underpins uh, you know, inequality, poverty, and unemployment in this country. So our endeavor is to really work with our founding partners and, and, and grow. In the last four years, uh, we have deployed over 900 uh, million rands uh, to, to fund close to 2,300 students uh, in this country across critical skills in the missing middle category of students. And we've graduated about 200 odd students at the end of, by the end of 2020, uh, which is a testament to the fact that we are growing to become one of the biggest bursary providers in this country as, as uh, just in a matter of four years. Uh, the future of ISFAP, I think, uh, belongs to the, the, the future of, of, of young South Africans. And I think we're really, really passionate about education. We're very passionate about funding the missing middle. We're very passionate about channeling uh, you know, public sector and private sector funds to make sure it has the biggest bang for its money uh, and making sure we have a high throughput rate with well-grown students coming out of the system that actually are employable and have really, really uh, you know, good qualities that employers really are looking for out there in the market. Um, and I think the, the important factor is that we would encourage funders, both public and private sector, to work with ISFAP to see how we can uh, fund more and more students uh, in the missing middle. Uh, just to give you a need, um, 26 billion is the need that, that the country needs every year to fund missing middle. Um, and we are only close to raising about 300 million rands every year, uh, you know, 
towards that target. So 300 million rands against a 26 billion rand uh, need that's out there. So we really implore and encourage public and private sector uh, to partner with ISTRAP and see how we can take this forward together. Uh, we thank the BE Commission very much for giving us the opportunity uh, to, be, uh, to speak today, but also to be awarded as uh, one of the members um, uh, in the bursary category uh, of awards. So we really thank um, uh, the minister, uh, we really thank the, the, the DG um, and, and all the senior people and executives at the BE Commission to, to give us that opportunity to speak to you guys and to also present our, our value proposition. Thank you very much and uh, have a good day.